Hello everyone, welcome to version 1.1 of my Uncharted 2 Brutal Difficulty Walkthrough. This will cover chapters 5 through 7, and these chapters represent one of my favorite points in the game, and it's when you're traversing Tibet. Tibet is one of the most interesting environments they ever created with the Uncharted series. The combat engagements are a lot of fun. Traversing the city and doing a lot of the parkour and just really seeing how much the color stands out in Tibet. There's just a lot of vibrancy to this entire environment compared to the likes of Uncharted 1, for instance, where everything just got old real fast. You were spending like 90% of the game traversing jungles and forts, and the only time they ever really did something interesting was when you went to that German bunker, and Seven Seventeen doesn't like that change to the environment. He says it's boring compared to the jungles, but I disagree with him. It's a subjective matter, but it really felt like Naughty Dog was reusing assets a lot with the jungle and the forts, and then the bunker area comes along, and it really feels like a nice change of pace, and with the enemy engagements, it was something different, something fresh. But for the most part, Uncharted 1 clearly showcases uh, Naughty Dog's greenhorn status at the time. And then you get to Uncharted 2, and you really understand how much Naughty Dog had learned from Uncharted 1. And they delivered a fun game. I mean, the introduction of Brutal Difficulty kind of puts that into contention. But either way, this game on Brutal Difficulty is a lot of fun compared to Uncharted 1. Uncharted 1 doesn't deserve to exist. And then Brutal Difficulty didn't need to be an additional difficulty with that game. And... You know, I need to talk more about the differences between crushing and brutal difficulty on Uncharted 1 when I get the chance, but now is not the time. We have this engagement right here. You can get rid of the first couple of enemies with stealth, but the game will force you into combat because that's just how this game rolls. The stealth only exists to complement the combat. It's not an option at your disposal that allows you to approach the entire combat sequence differently. It's just there to make the combat easier for the later parts and it really feels no different to like a loading screen or just going through some arbitrary step you might as well just put a checkpoint after this arbitrary process i've done if you want us to do the combat encounter but at least Uncharted 2 offers some guerrilla tactics when you're approaching these combat sequences. So right here, I fired my gun behind that column and I was able to draw the enemies to that spot. And what this also did is it spawned in another set of enemies. That spawn always happens regardless of what you do. But to trigger it early is very advantageous because they're going to go over to where I fired my gun. And I can use my grenades to take out most of them. And my second grenade unfortunately clipped on a light fixture, so I wasn't able to get rid of all of them. But luckily for me, an enemy was about to throw a grenade, and the third grenade detonated. And that allowed me to get rid of a couple of enemies, and I was put into a bit of a hairy situation. And you saw how bad the shotgun is on this game. The shotguns in Uncharted 2 are nowhere near as good as the shotguns in Uncharted 1. The range I was shooting those enemies at with the shotgun... I would have killed those enemies in Uncharted 1, but in Uncharted 2, the damage mitigation system on your shotgun is even more extreme compared to Uncharted 1, and you really notice how underpowered the shotgun feels on this game compared to Uncharted 1, and it's disappointing. Like, the shotguns were one of the most powerful tools you could ever use in Uncharted 1, and for them to change the parameters just arbitrarily, like I, I don't really see the justification for it. And it would have balanced out uh, certain encounters in Uncharted 2. I mean, you can still get them done without the shotgun, but I feel like the game would have been a little bit more interesting had the shotguns been the same as they were in Uncharted 1. But right now, I'm searching the area for supplies, and I've killed the enemies, but there's another spawn that will occur. And you can trigger a last zone position before these enemies uh, actually detect you. So right there, I hid behind this washing machine, and the cutscene triggered, and now the enemies don't know where I am. So I'm going to use one grenade to take out the enemies, and when the camera changes position like that, it means that Chloe is going to spawn in, and she does right here. So that is the end of that spawn. Go around the environment, pick up some grenades, pick up that West pistol. You'll want to jump over to this sign and use one grenade in the correct position to kill a lot of the enemies and also use the propane tank to your advantage. And I used two grenades for safe measure, but that probably wasn't the best idea because there's a shield guy in the sequence. And without grenades, shield guys are probably the most dangerous enemy type in Uncharted 2. And shield guys were first introduced in Uncharted 2, and the way they work is they will tank all of your hits if you're aiming directly for the shield, and the shield has unlimited durability for them. You use their shield, your shield has limited durability for whatever reason. It makes no sense. But when you do shoot their shield enough, they will fall over and you can shoot their legs or you can press square on them to jump over the shield and then get behind them and press square again in order to take them down. But doing so is very dangerous. 
this right here was pretty dangerous as well because there were enemies right over there and they could have shot me just then. But I take the time to use the cover transition to my advantage to generate a last known position back in my previous cover spot. And now the enemies are searching for me. But I take a shot right over there, and that was probably not the best idea. I should have just gone over to this spot and then shot them. But at the time, I wasn't used to using this wall right here. I didn't even know you could do this until I just happened to find it and use it to my advantage. But I'm just waiting for the enemies to not be shooting at me. I'm just waiting for them to recognize my last lone position. And that is when I will shoot them. And I've taken out those guys on the walkway. Now I just need to take out these two guys. And that will be the end of this chapter right here. And now we move on to chapter 6. I've restarted the entire chapter so my loot is entirely different. Which is why you don't see me carrying a lot of the loot I had previously. So go ahead and take out these guys. And when you take out this rocket launcher guy, Chloe is going to throw a grenade. And this is where you're going to need to be very, very specific on how you move through this environment and how you deal with the enemies. So what you need to do is you need to get over to this cover spot before Chloe's grenade detonates. Use your blind fire on the AK-47 to take out these two guys. Now from here, you need to make sure that you go over to the cover spot that is to your left. And it's right, right in front of me right now. So the reason why you need to do this is to stop the infinite spawn because there is an infinite spawn in this entire area if you don't push forward. This is one of the uh, main problems with Uncharted 2 and I think it's also with Uncharted 3. Uh, and I think it was also the case with Uncharted 4. But Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 4, they have these moments where if you don't push up, the enemies continually respawn just like the old Call of Duty games. And I don't understand why. I don't know why games during this generation favored these really arbitrary and artificial ways of spawning in enemies it just at times it feels like a bug and you just you'll just be killing enemies constantly and it, it doesn't make any sense but here you've got to go to the left hand side to trigger those enemies to spawn on the left and i'm having issue with the geometry right now and i almost died trying to get into that cover spot but you need to get over there you need to kill some of the enemies and then throw a grenade because when you throw the grenades, the enemies, they will try to dive out of the way, and using that animation to my advantage, I'm able to stop the enemies from firing for a bit to get over to the spot. I should be able to generate a last zone position from this position right over here, and most of the time there can be enemies over at this cover spot. I don't really know what they're doing right there, but I'm going to take some shots at these enemies. Uh, that guy goes into cover and it doesn't help, and somehow I miss his head, which is odd. But... I'm just going to go over to this spot right here, and you'll notice that the D-pad on the left side of the screen has appeared. So it means these enemies are spawning right now. So I'm going to throw a grenade when they spawn in, and you need to be very quick right here to get rid of these enemies and get rid of the driver. That guy can be very sneaky. And the turrets on this game are very broken. The actual hitbox of the turret does not match the modeling on the turret like the actual width of the hitbox doesn't match the width of this turret so the enemies can actually shoot you at angles that don't make any sense like the plates are very dishonest in this game and they fix this issue with the turrets in uncharted 3 and in uncharted 4 i mean uncharted 1 had turrets but the turrets were largely useless aside from one sequence but they never had this problem but Turrets in Uncharted 2, they're the most unreliable turrets in the Uncharted series by far. The, the actual meshing on the turret and the way the hitbox is designed does not match the modeling on the turret, which is why you can get hit at angles that don't make any sense. So camera positioning is very important when you are trying to take breaks in between shooting when you're using the turret. And also this right here is a bullshit spawn. So when you first start the sequence, these enemies on Brutal Difficulty, they'll always kill you. There's nothing you can do to get to this cover position quickly. You've got to restart the checkpoint or die in order to get to this cover position before they kill you. It is bullshit. And I've saved it as a blooper for this video. And this right here, the reason why I'm able to melee this guy is because I caught him by surprise. He was not prioritizing me, he was prioritizing Chloe. And I also kind of generated a last known position. And this is why I'm able to melee him. Normally these guys will just counter you, but as long as you do it exactly like that, you will not get countered by that guy. And you just saw the melee combat for this game, and the melee combat on this game is horrible. It's the worst 
melee system in the Uncharted series. I have no idea what crack Naughty Dog was smoking when designing the melee on this game, but your melee hits mean absolutely nothing. The only thing that matters is when the enemies choose to counter you, and it is random how many melee hits they will allow you to get in before they counter you. And during that entire animation, you are vulnerable to damage. And you want to know the worst part? As soon as you start melee, or as soon as an enemy starts to melee you, and I mentioned this back in Chapter 4, you are stuck in that entire animation. You cannot leave melee until you kill the guy that you started melee with. It is bullshit. So you have got to make sure you do not get close to the enemies on this game. Just dispatch them at a distance with your weapons, and you'll be fine. And that right there was me using the last on position on the ledge. And when I was clear, I was able to make my way over to this spot. And now I'm going to be able to use the last on position again to clear out the enemies with my pistol. And moving on, we have a couple more enemies. There's going to be a guy with a shotgun who is so close to you. But he is very slow to attack you. And even when he's very close to you and he can see you, he will choose to melee you rather than actually shoot you with a shotgun. Because that's just the proclivity the enemies have on this game. And that right there was fucking bullshit. How the hell did his hitbox get obstructed by the geometry? There's some kind of uh, invisible collision on this cover that obstructed the shots from my shotgun. It's bullshit. But, you know, I would have been safe either way because he would have just meleeed me. But I imagine if I were to come out of cover, those enemies would have shot me. And um, now we just need to shoot this propane tank to knock over the enemies. I love these engagements. These smaller skirmishes with the enemies, uh, they showcase a bit more intelligence with how the environment is laid out, with how you deal with the enemies. It's really good. And also right here, I restarted the checkpoint because I want to get this guy to spawn in in a consistent way. So he hasn't spawned in, but as soon as I jump over here, he spawns in. If you just try dealing with him the very first time you start the sequence, it's random where he goes. Which is why it's better to restart the checkpoint to control his spawn. But right now we have the chopper sequence right here. So you're going to be able to run initially, and then at some point the platform below you is going to collapse. And you have to climb. This is where Brutal Difficulty can rear its ugly head because randomly you can die on this part, but luckily for me, I didn't die. So right here is where you can die. Uh, if these two enemies start to shoot you very early, you're dead. There's nothing you can do about it. But use your grenades to dispatch these two enemies and also use your Mikoruzi to your advantage. The Mikoruzi on this game is a significant improvement over the Mikoruzi in Uncharted 1. Mikoruzi in Uncharted 1 was very inaccurate. Its spread was very wide when you were shooting it and you had to succumb to Nate's slow aiming animation every time he wanted to fire it. But here, the Micro Uzi does a lot of damage. It actually comes out very quickly when you're trying to aim it, and the spread is nowhere near as wide compared to the Micro Uzi and Uncharted 1. But these other two enemies, deal with them accordingly. I choose to rush, which is probably not the best idea, but I think I only did it because the chopper was putting pressure on me. And then when we get to this spot right here, a bunch of enemies are going to spawn right in front of you. So you've got to get into cover very quickly before they kill you. In this recording, I didn't use one of my grenades to kill the first two enemies that spawned in when you first began this chopper sequence. So I'm instead going to use this grenade to get rid of these two enemies. I probably didn't need to do that because I think the chopper can take care of these enemies because it accidentally kills them. And I think the chopper killed one of the other enemies, so good for me. But there is going to be an additional enemy that is scripted to spawn in when you go around the corner. So I'm going to try to deal with him, but he somehow ignores these shots and he's able to get some hits in on me. Like, no flinches whatsoever. And he unfortunately pulls me into the threshold that causes these enemies to spawn in. So I lose my opportunity to get rid of them very quickly with the Micro Uzi. But now that they're dead, we're going to be able to start this next sequence, which unfortunately, uh, Brutal Difficulty rears its ugly head with its poor designs. Because right there, I had to restart the checkpoint because I died. Every time you drop down into this area, the first time you begin it, uh, the enemies will always kill you. There's nothing you can do about it. Even when blind firing to delay the enemies, it's still not enough because of the way the enemies are positioned. So right there, uh, when you restart the checkpoint, you'll need to blind fire. If you do not blind fire, you will always die. Blind firing will slow the enemies down enough to allow you to get into cover. And then right here, you've got to throw a grenade in that corner right over there so that you can uh, cause this enemy to be delayed. Uh, I think maybe my grenade was off a bit and he just wasn't shooting me because he was prioritizing Chloe. But either way, I was able to kill the other two enemies and I was able to get rid of that guy. And we have just done that really fun sequence that works really well aside from those two instances where Brutal Difficulty rears its ugly head. Compared to Uncharted 1, the bullshit on this game isn't as intense. Thank God for that. But right here, there is a West Pistol. Make sure you pick this up before you start the next sequence. 
And this part has a grenade launcher guy, and I'm going to use uh, one grenade in order to get rid of this guy. Do not underestimate the grenade launcher guys on this game. The grenade launcher guys are so bullshit because they have the ability to perfectly aim their grenades to just land right on top of you, and it is so trash. It really is. But it's mainly an issue in Chapter 19. Like, at the very end of Chapter 19, there is a sequence where you have two grenade launcher guys uh, in the mix of enemies, and they can catch you out unsuspectingly with their grenades, and you're just not expecting it because you think they don't see you, but they actually do see you because of how much they're able to arc their grenades perfectly in order to hit you perfectly in cover. It's pretty dumb, but I'll talk about it when I get to Chapter 19. But right now, we've dealt with those enemies. Luckily for me, uh, one of the enemies chose to throw a grenade, so I shot him. He dropped the grenade, and he killed most of his friends. The enemies on this game, they give you about one second to actually shoot them before they fully throw the grenade. In Uncharted 3, it's even greater. They give you almost 2.5 seconds to hit the guy before he actually throws his grenade, and it's pretty powerful in Uncharted 3 because of this additional parameter, and that plus the ability to throw grenades back in Uncharted 3, you could get some interesting results with the combat in Uncharted 3. But right now we have a boss fight against the chopper, which is really well designed. So you'll want to open up with four shots from your grenade launcher. After the fourth shot, these two enemies will spawn in. So deal with them using your magnum or your grenade launcher, preferably the grenade launcher. You might as well blind fire the grenade launcher because blind firing the grenade launcher is so powerful in this game. And once they're dead, you'll need to navigate the environment to find more ammunition for the grenade launcher. And you'll be able to dispatch this guy easily. The choppers on this game are really well designed because they're designed around crushing difficulty, not brutal difficulty. So they will not murk you instantly. And like, it makes so much sense. I mean, look at this guy. Look at the amount of bullets he is able to put down the line. Look how easily he's able to shoot me. If this was brutal difficulty, I would not survive. But they had the foresight to realize this. And, you know, there's a lot of clever designs like that in Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 with the balancing of damage, but you go to Uncharted 1 and it's almost non-existent. I mean, it's like a completely different team handled Uncharted 1 Remastered compared to Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 Remastered, and it makes no sense how the teams could be this divisive in their decision-making when it should have been handled by one team. I mean, it was Bluepoint for crying out loud. Bluepoint was the one that handled the remasters for these games. Why couldn't it just be one team that was handling all three of the remasters or just have it where their decision-making is unanimous between the three groups and how they're balancing certain sections? I mean, at times, uh, Uncharted 1 has uh, that balancing you understand, like with the turrets, for instance. Like, the turrets in Uncharted 1 are balanced around crushing difficulty compared to brutal difficulty. But it's just, that same kind of balancing is lacking in a lot of areas in Uncharted 1 Remastered. And this poor balancing just forced you to rely upon the dumbest strategies ever that just slowed that game down. And it was just very feeble. And like I said before, Uncharted 1 Remastered on Brutal Difficulty and Uncharted 1 in general is my least favorite Uncharted game because it gets so much wrong. And it's merely a consequence of it being the first game in the series and Naughty Dog was just starting out with this new IP. But it's still inexcusable. I mean, there are developers that can deliver new IPs at a better quality compared to Uncharted 1, so there's really no excuse for Uncharted 1's pitiful state. But I haven't been talking much with Chapter 7. Chapter 7 is just two engagements, and we just did the previous one. Now we're on this one, and it's so simple. Just take out the enemies in the exact same pattern like I do, and once this turret guy is dead, use the turret to get rid of the other two waves of enemies, and that will be it. And then the rest of this is just bloopers. There are two bloopers. And these are bloopers involving these very cheap moments where the enemies damage me very quickly and there's no way to escape unless you restart the checkpoint. And with this, this is the end of this video. Stay tuned for the future chapters. Thank you all for watching and you take care now.